Last week, we looked at why you have to forgive. Basically, forgiveness is not optional. If you won't forgive others, God can't forgive you. So this is a life or death, heaven or hell issue. We've talked about what forgiveness is and why you should forgive. Uh, I'm assuming you've already decided you want to forgive. Now you just need help doing it. So practically, how? How do you do it? How do you forgive the person who has offended you? I understand this isn't easy. Some of you have been struggling this, with this for years. I don't pretend to know all the answers, but I want to give you some practical steps and some principles. Forgiveness starts with this decision. Base your forgiveness on what God has done for you rather than on what the person has done to you. See, remembering God's forgiveness towards me helps me extend forgiveness to you. I forgive you because God forgives me. When I realize how much I've been forgiven, how can I not forgive you? Let God heal your past wounds. Unforgiveness means you desire to hurt the people who hurt you. Read a story about a little boy sitting on a park bench in obvious pain. And a man asked him what was wrong. And the boy said, I'm sitting on a bee. And the guy said, well, why don't you get up? And the boy said, well, I figure I'm hurting him more than he's hurting me. Well, the healing process begins when you get up off the bench and quit trying to hurt the other. Forgiveness and healing are connected. God will only heal your wounds when you stop inflicting pain on those who hurt you. You may think you can't forgive because you hurt too much. That if you didn't hurt, then you can forgive. That's backwards. The hurt won't go away until you forgive. Hate keeps you from forgiving. In order to forgive, you have to change your viewpoint and you have to see your offender through the eyes of Jesus. Just like you, they're a sinner in need of a Savior. When you look through the eyes of Jesus, you can see the real needs and you can actually feel compassion towards the person who hurt you. You say, well, that's impossible. No, no, remember Jesus on the cross? After having his hands and feet nailed to the cross, Jesus looked down at the people who were inflicting that pain, and he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they should do. Even in intense pain and agony, Jesus looked on his persecutors with compassion, and Paul told us, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Remember, hurting people hurt people. People often hurt others because they themselves are hurting. Instead of anger, have compassion for their hurts. Now, quick word of caution. If someone tries to use that as an excuse for hurting you, if they say, the reason I'm hurting you is because I was hurt, that's manipulation. Don't fall for that. It's a principle, not an excuse. Now, does seeing people through the eyes of Jesus mean you have to let them back in your inner circle? No. Do you have to let them move back in to your home, to your, to your life? No, that's not what I'm saying. Forgiveness is not a reunion, but you can see them with compassion. To forgive, choose to pay off the debt the person owes you. People may owe you uh, different kinds of debt. Maybe somebody borrowed money and they haven't paid it back. Some owe a debt of gratitude. You did things and they haven't thanked you like they should. It hurts when someone ignores your contribution or ignores your help. It makes you feel used. Maybe somebody owes you an apology. They've done something wrong and they have yet to come to you. In order to forgive them, you have to quit expecting them to repay their debts. Instead, pay it off yourself. Change your way of thinking from they owe me to if they owe you money, you're probably never going to get it. You've learned that anyway, right? So you might as well just think that way. They probably aren't going to say thank you. The apology will never come. They're not going to make it right. Quit expecting them to make it right or repay the debt. Instead, in your mind, cancel the debt and consider it done. And then if it, if it happens, it's just a blessed surprise. When you're hurt, you record the incident on the videotape of your mind. And every time you recall an injury, you hit the play button 
and you watch that hurt all over again. Remembering the event brings the pain back. The person may have caused harm once, but as you keep replaying the hurt, you experience it a hundred times. Your own unforgiveness causes the pain to be multiplied. You have to stop replaying the hurt. Forgetting is difficult. But when the hurt comes to mind, instead of dwelling on it, move on. Do something else. Pray. Read your Bible. Listen to music. Play with the kids. Make a coconut cream pie for your pastor. Do something else. <laughs> Do, that, that's not in my notes. That just came. I, I'm not sure. That might be the Lord just speaking right there. <laughs> Do anything other than sitting there and thinking about it. Refuse to play back the tape. If someone comes to you and tries to get you to tell the story, don't do it. Tell them, I'm not going there. I've moved on. To move on, focus on the future. You can't drive forward while looking in the rearview mirror. I tried it this week. It was a disaster. If you spend too much time trying to analyze the past, it will destroy you. You, you can learn from the past, but don't live in the past. Now, it's inevitable. You're going to be hurt. And when that happens, your response is a choice. You get to choose whether you are hurt or offended. Someone said to me, uh, Rod, I, I'm sorry I offended you. My response was, you can't offend me. You can't. I love you. No matter what you do, you can't offend me. See, me being offended isn't something you do. It's something I choose. I get to choose whether or not I'm offended. You do not have enough control over me to make me offended. You can't make that choice for me. Only you can choose the position of your heart. That's in your control, not theirs. Choose not to act out of offense, but instead to forgive out of love. Let that be the position of your heart. If you want to forgive, choose not to be offended. Apply Proverbs 10, 12 to the situation. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers over all wrongs. Love covers wrongs. Because I love you, I choose to overlook what could have been considered an offense. I choose not to be offended. You didn't talk to me in the hall this morning. I have a choice. I choose not to be offended. You sent me a critical email. I have a choice. I choose not to be offended. If that was going to offend me, I'd be offended all the time. You didn't visit me in the hospital, even though I posted on Facebook that I was there, which, by the way, is not informing us. We do not have somebody just sitting all day watching Facebook feeds to see who's in the hospital. Choose not to be offended. You didn't send me a note, but you sent someone else a note. I choose not to be offended. Your actions are unethical or wrong. I still have a choice. I choose not to be offended. You say, well, I deserve to be offended. No, you can choose not. You forgot to call me back. You forgot my name. You forgot my birthday. You thought it would be cute to send me a pickle. <laughs> I choose not to be offended. By the way, after I talked a bit, apparently a bit much last week about pickles, um, because you're a smart aleck church family. Um, I got a bunch of pickle gifts this week. And so in response to your wonderful expressions of whatever they were, um, I, I have a new rule. I just want you to know, I will not send thank you notes for pickles. I don't care what it is. I don't care how funny it is. I'm not going to reply. Uh, you can send me a gold-plated pickle, and I'm still not going to say thank you. Okay, I just sounded offended, didn't I? I I'm going to choose not to be offended by your smart aleck pickle gifts that you sent me. And no, I don't want to try the pickle soda. And no, I don't think pickled pie is cute. No, I don't think the little pickle ornament is cute. I don't like any of that stuff. Keep it. Give it to somebody that likes pickles. Don't waste your pickles on me. <laughs> Move on. I get it. Love covers over an offense. I'm not offended. You say, but Pastor Rod, you don't understand what he did. You don't understand what she said. 
you don't understand how I was hurt. Love covers over an offense. It is your choice whether you're going to be offended. Look at Proverbs 17, 9. He who covers over an offense promotes love. But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. When you choose not to be offended, you promote love. If you repeat the matter, if you tell the story, if you pass on the offense to others, you separate close friends and you have positioned yourself as an enemy of love. I choose not to be offended. I choose to promote love. I choose not to repeat an offense and risk someone else picking it up. I will promote love. Here's how the message says it. Overlook an offense and bond a friendship. Fasten on to a slight and goodbye friend. It's amazing to me, but I've watched it. People will walk away from a 20-year friendship because of one hurtful word. Don't do that. Be bigger than that. In literary terms, there's a phrase, compendium of his work. Here's what that means. When an author writes one bad book, don't give up on him and never read anything else he writes. Instead, consider the compendium of his work. Consider all that he's done, everything that he's written. Don't judge him by one bad book. Consider them all. Don't judge your friend or a leader by one offense or one misspoken word. Instead, consider the totality of your friendship. When you do, then you can choose to overlook the offense and bond the friendship. Still not convinced? Let me give you another one. Proverbs 12, 6. A fool shows his annoyance at once. But a prudent man overlooks an insult. And you're saying, Pastor Rod, hold on a second. You're telling me I, I'm supposed to overlook an insult? No, I didn't say that. The Bible did. It's your choice. We live, America right now is an offended nation. Right? Everybody's offended, and they're quick to be offended, and they're quick to tell everybody about their offense. Stop it. That's, that's, that doesn't honor Jesus. That doesn't obey his word. If somebody hurts your feelings in the words of Frozen, let it go. And no, I'm not going to sing the song. <laughs> Choose to overlook it. Bond a friendship. Promote love. Choose not to be offended. Instead, choose to forgive. Choose to say the words and live the actions of forgiveness. You may not have the feelings of forgiveness. Forgive anyway. Choose to forgive. Forgiveness is a decision. I can choose to forgive you even if you're not repentant. I choose to forgive you because I don't want to live with unforgiveness in my own life. I choose to forgive you because I don't want to continue the hurt. My forgiveness is not contingent upon your words or your actions. Instead, my forgiveness is based on my understanding of God's grace, of how much he's forgiven me. It's tough that you must forgive, even if there's no repentance. Even if you can't see the person or you can't talk to them, and you say, well, I can't forgive them. They haven't apologized. That apology may never come. You take the first step. Choose to forgive. You say, well, I can't forgive them because they died. Yes, you can. Forgiveness is the position of your heart. For some of you, you need to pick up the phone this afternoon. You need to make a call. Reestablish relationship. You don't have to go back over the hurt. Just say words of forgiveness and love. Take the first step. Lay it down. Forgive. For others of you, it's simply a matter of making the decision, today I choose to forgive. There hasn't been an apology, but that doesn't matter. I forgive. A while back, a friend apologized to me for something that was said. And my response was, well, I forgave that as soon as it was said. You are and you were forgiven. I love you. Of course I forgave you. See, you can actually forgive ahead of the apology. That's okay. That's allowed. You can choose to forgive before they apologize or repent. Some of you simply refuse. You've been holding on to a, a hurt or an offense for a long time. You chose to be offended by, by something that 
now seem so. Some of you can't even remember why you're offended. I've counseled with the family that they were all mad at each other. And so I tried to peel back and I said, okay, so just tell me, where did it start? And they all just looked at each other. No one knew. They were locked in a family feud and no one knew why they hated each other. Don't be silly. Give it up. Choose to forgive. Some of you really want to forgive, but, but you're wondering, how can I ever forget what he did? How can I ever forgive the affair? How can I ever forgive my parents? How do I move beyond the past? How do I let go of the hurt? Can I really be healed? I mean, I understand. I have to give up the right. I, I, I have to choose to forgive. I can't be offended. But practically, what do I do? What does that look like? Time isn't healing your wounds. Those principles are great, but you want to know exactly how. How do I forgive? Well, I'm going to do my best to explain something I've learned. I didn't read it in a book or hear it from a counselor or a preacher. I learned this in real life, just working it out for myself. This makes sense to me. It might help you. Forgiveness is getting the hurt out of your spirit. Some things you can passively clear from your spirit. Let me show you what that looks like. Uh, sometime back, Pastor Brian crossed the line with me. Said something he shouldn't have. And later that night, he came back and apologized. Well, I love Pastor Brian. I forgave him before he apologized. Over and done. The moment I chose to forgive him, it was clear from my spirit. It was gone. I didn't have to work at it or keep working at it. I didn't think about it again. It's done. It's gone. A couple weeks ago, somebody came to me and they apologized for something they said. I didn't even remember it. And so then they said it again so I could remember. <laughs> Which, by the way, is not a good plan. When you go apologize to someone, don't say, the reason I was mad at you because you did this, this, this. And don't do that. Just apologize. Uh, they explained, I still didn't remember it. So the moment they said it, I must have forgiven them. Seeing them didn't bring it back up. The hurt didn't return. So that passively cleared from my spirit. It didn't require any work or any effort. Some things do that. Some things passively clear from your spirit. You choose to forgive. And depending on your personality or the nature of the offense, the hurt's gone. Uh, at that moment, in a day, in a week, it's gone. You don't have to work on getting it out of your spirit. It just clears. Other things are different. The hurt is profound and deep. The effects linger. The memory hurts. The hurt of betrayal. The horrible hurt of molestation or abuse. The pain of being abandoned. The agony of being rejected. And you wonder, how can I ever forgive? You try. But every time you see them, every time there's a trigger, every time you think about it, every time you experience the effects of what they did, you get mad all over again. And the more you think about it, the madder you get. Before long, you're more angry than you were when it happened. And that anger builds up in you, and it becomes resentment and bitterness. You can't allow that to stay there. But in those situations, what do you do? When the hurt festers, you have to face the issue over and over again. You have to actively clear your spirit. This goes to a key question that people often ask. How often do I have to forgive? How often do I have to give up the right to get even? As often as the memory of the hurt comes back. Every time you start to get resentful, it's time to forgive the it's time to begin the forgiveness process again. See, forgiveness is a decision. Forgiveness is also a journey. You've got to make the decision. Because if you won't make the decision, heaven's in jeopardy. But that doesn't mean you instantly are happy and feel better. It's a journey. So every time you remember the hurt, forgive again. Actively clear your spirit. When the hurt resurfaces... Make the decision all over again. Say it out loud. I choose to forgive them. I give up the right to get even. I choose forgiveness. God, I will not allow this to stay in my spirit. I choose to forgive. And you say, but if the hurt comes back, doesn't that mean I didn't forgive? No, that's not at all. 
What it means is you have another chance to practice the nature of God and forgive. You can't control your memory. You can control your response to the memories of that hurt. And sometimes just thinking the thoughts and making the choice again solves it. You've forgiven until the hurt comes back again. When when it does, when it comes back, clear your spirit again. Actively clear your spirit. Sometimes it takes more. So how do you clear your spirit when something stays there? When the thoughts consume you, when you keep paying the price, when you can't get past the hurt or the feelings, when saying the words doesn't work, what do you do? Let me tell you what I do. Find a place of prayer. I come here to the sanctuary. Sit down, kneel, or lie down. Now, here's why you don't walk around. Because physical movement tends to mirror your inner feelings. And you start out, you're just walking before long, you're stomping around the room, and you're just getting angrier and angrier. Uh, That feeds your anger. Don't do that. Get still, chill out, be quiet before God. And then begin to pray. Be honest with God. Tell God, God, I'm having trouble forgiving this person. I'm hurt, and I'm mad. Pour out the hurt and the anger to God, all of it. Tell God why you're mad. Tell him what you feel. Tell him what the person did. God can handle it. He's a big God. And guess what? He already knows it anyway. You're not surprising him. Take as long as you have to, as many times as it takes. Tell it all to God, every bit. Pour it out with the tears, with the anger, everything else. Get it out. This is very important. You're telling it to God, not to someone else. See, it's not gossip when you talk to God. Choosing the sin of gossip to deal with the sin of unforgiveness doesn't make any sense. Don't gossip. Go to God. You can tell God absolutely anything. Get it all out. The right place to vent is God. And then, after you've vented it all, ask God to help you forgive again. And pray this way. God, I will not let this person stand between me and you. I will not let them have that power in my life. I refuse to allow bitterness. Help me forgive. God, help me forgive as you forgive. Help me to have your nature instead of my nature. I choose to forgive. I will forgive. God, help me forgive. Then stay there. Sit, kneel, or bow in the presence of God. Don't get up until you have peace in your spirit and heart. Don't get up until his peace and love replaces the anger and unrest in your spirit. Sometimes it takes me five minutes. Sometimes much longer. Actively clear your spirit. Say, wait a second. So don't get up till I love the person? I'll be in the sanctuary till summer. That's not what I said. I didn't say stay there until you love them. Remember, this is a journey. This is a process. What I said was... Don't get up until you sense the peace and the presence of God washing away the anger and the resentment. Do you remember uh, when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples in a storm? Do you remember that story? Uh, real quick, the, Jesus and the disciples were in a boat. They were going across the sea, and the wind and the waves came up. Jesus was taking a nap, didn't freak him out, completely freaked out the disciples. They're yelling, they're screaming, they're thinking they're going to die. They wake up Jesus. Jesus gets up and says, what's the big deal? And then he looks at the wind and the waves and that storm and says three words, peace, be still. And the wind and the waves ceased. That same Jesus can speak those same three words, peace be still, to your inner storm. And then you can have the peace of God and walk in forgiveness. Don't get up until the peace of God is more powerful emotion than the anger or resentment. This is one of those times where if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, your prayer language can be important. Sometimes it's hard to know what to pray or how to pray. Often I'll just let the Spirit pray through me. The Holy Spirit intercedes and gives you the words to say. Then if the feelings come back again, right back to the presence of God, right back to that place. 
Listen, if Satan is the one trying to bring back those feelings, he will quit in a hurry when those feelings send you running to the presence of God. And you say, well, how long do I have to do this until you no longer have to actively clear your spirit? Until one day you realize that anger and bitterness is no longer in me. I'm walking free from that. I don't know how many days, weeks, months, years you'll have to make that decision, but make it every time. You say, isn't that a lot of time? Maybe, but it's worth it. You get to experience peace instead of bitterness, love instead of anger, and you can walk in forgiveness. By actively clearing your spirit, you don't allow that negative feeling, that unforgiveness, that anger to stay. Clear it out every time it shows up. Pray until frustration is replaced by peace. See, forgiveness is an ongoing process. Every time the hurt returns, actively clear your spirit again. It's a decision put into action, and you will feel like a weight has been lifted. You really can be peaceful and free. Someone I consider a friend really hurt me. I was manipulated and deceived and humiliated. On top of that, it cost me a lot of money. I was angry. But I knew my only option was to forgive. Every morning, I prayed, calling them by name, and said, Lord, help me forgive. Lord, I choose to forgive. Lord, help me forgive. And I called them by name. I did that for several months. Then a week and a half ago in our Friday prayer meeting, I was walking and praying, and I prayed it again when I suddenly realized I'm there. I don't have anger or hurt. I've forgiven. I no longer need to pray that way every day. I've moved forward. What happened? He didn't change. The situation didn't change. My opinion didn't change. My opinion's the same. My heart changed. And I was free. It's such a wonderful feeling. See, you don't have to change your opinion to change your heart. Release the person from your prison. Release the person who's offended you. Let him go. Unforgiveness is like a chain connecting you to the person who hurt you. If you don't release them, you're dragging them with you everywhere you go. When you go to bed at night, that unforgiven person is there to keep you awake. You can't get away from them. The only way to get unchained is to forgive and to release the person who's offended you. Unlock the chains and release them or you'll remain chained to them forever. The hurt will keep hurting and that hurt will frame your life. So pray this way. God, I release them from my anger. I release her from my hurt feelings. I release him from my disappointment. God, I know only I can choose the position of my heart, and I choose to position my heart like yours. And you will discover when you set him free, you'll be free. When you set her free, you'll be free. It's time. It's time. And then once you've released the person, you've forgiven others, you can rejoice, and you can receive God's forgiveness. Because that's what's at stake. Remember what Jesus said. We have to go back to this because it's so important. Because you could listen to all this and say, sounds good, I'm not doing it. Here's what Jesus said. If you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sin, your Father will not forgive your sin. We don't have a choice. This is not optional. You have to forgive others because your own forgiveness hinges on it. You say, well, I don't want to forgive. It doesn't matter what you want. It matters what's right. If you did everything you want, we'd all be in trouble, right? I want to do a lot of things. It's right. The people you haven't forgiven have kept you from God's best for your life. They have kept you from God's best for your ministry, God's best for your relationship, God's best for your family, God's best for your children, God's best for your grandchildren, God's best for your future. I challenge you, make the decision to forgive those who have hurt you and receive the forgiveness of God. Receive the peace of God. You can really get there.
it can really happen. Would you bow your heads with me? I want to pray for you. We do it a lot of ways. Sometimes we have people stand up, raise their hands, come to the front. Today, I just want to pray for you because really um, the working out, the response to this message is not something we do right now in this moment, but it's something you get to put into action. And so I want to pray for you. I want to pray that you'll forgive, and then I just kind of want to guide you through the process, and we're going to clear our spirits this morning. Lord, I pray for people in this room and people watching online that they've got a hurt Lord or it's real we don't diminish that a real hurt real pain something wrong happened Lord we we choose today to forgive to release the person from the prison of our hurt to unlock the chains to set them free so we can be free We make that decision, Lord. Lord, help us not to let hurt and anger simmer in our soul until it becomes anger and resentment and bitterness. We release that today in Jesus' name. And now, Lord, we together, we work on clearing our spirits. I choose to forgive. Go ahead and just call that name to the Lord in prayer. I choose to forgive him. I choose to forgive her. Lord, help me to forgive. Help me, Lord. The hurt's there. But help me forgive. Lord, help me. I pray that you would replace those feelings of hurt with a feeling of peace. Lord, that you would replace anger with instead joy. God, I I can't get back everything I've lost. But help me not to focus on the loss but instead to focus on you and your blessings, what you've done in my life. Lord, I choose to forgive. Help me forgive. Help me, Lord, to clear that out of my spirit. Lord, every time that hurt comes back again, I'm coming right back to you, right back to your presence. Help me, Lord. Help me to forgive and to be free. In the name of Jesus, Jesus' name. Amen. This week, we conclude our 40 days of fasting and prayer, actually on Thursday. For me, um, it's been so powerful. I just sense a season of victory beginning for us after a really difficult season of spiritual warfare. For me, for our church, I can't wait to see what's ahead. I can't wait to experience this next season with you. But I want to share a song with you. This song really ministered to me through the difficulties of 2019. I've listened to it at home, airplanes, in my truck, in my office. I've listened to it hundreds of times this year. This is every year I have a book of the year and a song of the year. And this is my song of the year for 2019. It's a simple song, but it encouraged me. And it helped me have the right outlook on difficulties and challenges. Maybe you're still fighting. There's still challenges. Maybe even this week, you've got some situations you're dreading. Come on, victory is on its way. A season of victory is coming. It's just on the other side. And as we enter this holiday season, this song is my prayer for you. The title is simply, God is Good.
song. Would you sing it with us? your glory be revealed through us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming to church today, everybody.